That's right. That's what's going on now. I think they're all going to go back to sleep. It's been uh, the summer we never got. Yeah, that's what I was saying this earlier this year. Crickets are sounding real nice out there. It's becoming really a sound I dislike when I realize it's attached to society. And that's not a good thing. Every week come to tell you about that. I know you don't like to hear it maybe so much. But that's the truth, and that's what we're going to have to deal with if we want to throw off what has occupied us for, well, generations, generations and generations. Found another quote. Someone must have been listening behind a woodshed. Knowledge, if it does not determine action, is dead to us. That's right. Knowledge if it does not determine action, is dead to us. What do I have been saying? Knowledge is not power, folks. Information collectors are just irrelevant. What are you going to do with the knowledge that you have? And this guy actually didn't listen behind the woodshed. Otherwise, other than the woodshed idea, has probably been around forever. As soon as there was a, a son. <laughs> It was probably a woodshed. Knowledge without action, folks. If it doesn't determine action. So what I've been saying behind the woodshed forever, as long as I've been doing this, and long before I even got to be able to start broadcasting. Knowledge is not power. And we see that over and over again. It's one of these, for me, that's, it's another psyop that we've been told so that we become ineffectual. Like the collection of knowledge in itself is something. And it's not. Action, folks. And it's the action taken based on a knowledge. Hopefully you're adding an experience, in other words, wisdom to your action. This is what it's called. This guy who found this out a long time ago, apparently, Plutinus, made that statement a long time ago. Again, nothing new under the sun. There are some people, and this guy is a philosopher. Again, don't listen to the, if you don't listen to the guy behind the woodshed, you can listen to this guy, I suppose, if you, if you want to. Or you can keep listening to those that want to keep you sedated and think that all the piles of knowledge in the bag, the bags of stuff you fill up with knowledge is going to be good enough. It isn't, folks. And at least one of the guy in history found it out long before me. And so I'm going to repeat it again and again and again. More than just a philosophy you might be able to argue with, it becomes reality. You just think knowledge in itself is the is the end, and not the means to the end. And that what you need to do is put your knowledge in practice, if you will, in impose upon it the duty that it has to give you action, a determined action with it. Other, so if you're refined at all, you're not going to just grab up all kinds of information, just as I've been telling you. Pretty interesting how these things come up. And this is the thing I keep saying. If you just jump into something that you don't like, it doesn't have to be big. Just get back in the practice of writing uh, even a minor wrong. As you would a minor behind a woodshed. And this is why I say again, this is not to bring you behind a woodshed and teach you the principles and the fact that you're you know, recalcitrant or whatever. No, this is where you learn how that you forgot that you should be doing that, bringing those that come against you improperly a get behind a woodshed euphemistically and so I just I don't know what to say I get so much uh, resistance knowledge if not if it does not determine action is dead to us means all the knowledge that you have that you don't use or put determine an action for you it's just dead weight baggage gets in your way and so I, I think I, I say this every week I don't know if people appreciate this. One other guy in the world says it. I'm sure there's others, folks. I mean, how, how else can we get out? We're in a time when there's really no place on, and I can't say no place, very few places on earth that isn't interconnected to bring up all the wisdom of people everywhere. And we still see division. We still see the sh falling short, the fallen nature, falling short of what we need to do. We'll stop at the first step. And we won't go up the steps and ascend to what we have 
a right to do or need to do or necessity or the ability to, what, what will we say, take the benefit of our own awareness and principles that aren't necessarily so fallen when we understand the limitation. Again, it's not perfect. We're looking for perfection. Stop it. It's not going to happen here. But we can aspire to better. And we can certainly not be an instrument of harm. And then we are duty-bound, if that's the case, if we even chose that, we're duty-bound in that, actually, to step up and stop those that would. And so, what, again, I say my mind just wants to shut down. It just wants to say, this is supposed to be in us, and it's not. I've just said it. That should be enough. I know it's not. So I'm going to talk some more. Here, you'll get some links. BTW RLM 333 is where you're going to hopefully put in Real Liberty Media, maybe behind the woodshed, maybe we're up at the top of the search listings, maybe we haven't been search, uh, censored, that you can go to the content links that I'll provide if you want to read up on these uh, these issues, and uh, take your clues and move from there if you find these things in interesting. Now you can find, uh, for those of you that haven't heard for a while, I don't usually do this, and I don't do this so well, I should do maybe better, but you can find uh, during the live, you can find this broadcast at rlmradio.xyz. I understand if you go to iHeart, you can pick us up. Uh, Grimner created that, allowed the petition to have this broadcast there, and I think we were accepted. I think we're on TuneIn. I think we're on Internet-Radio. We're on Spreaker. Thank you, Grammy Mary. Uh, we're lots of places of sound minds over at YouTube Simulcast. Thank you all the, over there, the crew over there. Appreciate what you all do to keep, uh, keep your dialogue going and working through all this. Again, it's just us figuring out what's important, and I'm here to tell you, you don't need to necessarily put yourself in jeopardy, and again, you're going to be in the face of the jaws of the beast to do so, because the beast is up and big around us. It grew up around us, and we didn't realize that it was what it was. It, it has a, it, it's a good chameleon, and there's people that are pretty, I don't think they're so so intelligent, but they're, I guess, more devious. They figured out how to encroach. In fact, not to bring it up too much more than a statement. Uh, our, my discussion, uh, I had a discussion this weekend, uh, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion came up in not what everyone wants to promote them, as I've told you. This is a, really a manual of a human exploitation uh, of what where you can be exploited. I read that document a long time ago. It devastated me for about four days. When I re I just, I had, you know, being, I guess you can say, innocent to the real, the real deceit in the world and that it's action. And that realizing somebody, as I've said before, nothing new here to say you, to you today about this, I've realized there's people that knew me better than I knew myself. And at some point I came out of that with the determination I wouldn't, although I may be always vulnerable, I'm going to raise the, the bar about how exploitable I can be. And this is also at the time I'm learning a whole lot of new things. I've told you my memory went away. I was able to go in with almost with a clean slate uh, to regain new information. And so I, I kind of came in with a new view with this uh, realization now. The the truth of the world is is pretty debased. But how do we, well, but that doesn't mean that we go away, and that doesn't mean that we don't have our life to live, and we don't have our standards that we can keep. And so I learned a little different thing about these protocols, that they were an exploitation manual, and uh, I've applied those. In fact, that's what the discussion was. There was a, a mail-out, that went out, and I said, you know, about for, about people looking like they want to help communities, and this is my first problem. When you start talking communities, I'm already got my my new my new dialogue, my new terminology, my magic decoder ring listens very carefully, and I see I hear words that come together that shouldn't be there actually if you're talking law and in principle. And that piques my interest to be very suspicious. Well, uh, a mail out went out, and even though it looked like it was on the correct side of protecting people and against wildfire and all this other stuff, there were indications of a problem, many problems actually. And you, the only way you know that is if you get in and start studying this stuff. You just can't do it by you know, looking at the Internet and thinking that someone else has an opinion for you. You have to read this stuff. You have to familiarize yourself with how this all works. You can't do it from afar. And you can't do it through anybody else. That I cannot tell what this that this mail out is actually valid for what they're claiming on the paper, which is really nebulous too. 
And uh, I wanted, again, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion popped up because had it not been for me reading that and deeply affected by knowing that someone was out there that could be deceitful and I couldn't rip, it would be tra that deceit would be transparent to me. I wouldn't be able to look at and come up with the ideas that I have over th in the past that I've told you about. There's nothing new here. In this case, that letter that goes out to the people, a mass mailing, costs a lot of money to do this stuff. You have to also understand there's some money behind what goes on in, when you see things that go mass mailings or mass whatever, mass uh, propaganda. And and that could have been because this this idea of deceit and the methods that we sued in 2013. Uh, and some of the people in over at Sound Minds ask, what case was this? This was Jefferson Mining District versus Kitzhopper that was sued in 2013. It's an equity action. And uh, you'll see a file there. And be be very knowledgeable on, on judicial procedure before you make any ideas and agree that that case was ever dismissed. Because you'll notice a quo warranto challenging the judge's authority to do anything was not answered. And therefore, any order written by any judge is invalid. In fact, one of the orders stated that the judge had no jurisdiction. So before you see a dismissal in that case, I want you to consider seriously what I'm telling you here about what's going on in the deception about justice and how to plug, push through it and to expose that it is injustice, but that law still sits there to prevail. That we sued upon the method. One of the methods is using your, uh, moving transparent to you, moving like a chameleon, changing your spots. This is all like Machiavellian type stuff as well. But they, they come and they move in like they want to help you. And what? And, and they use you to take you down or take down their opponent. What is that definition I've told you before but the stalking horse? We talked about it over and over. Dapple it was one of them. No, Dapple was one of them. There's many of these things. That a, a mere mailing can be a stalking horse. In other words, you see it in the definition that a, a power, um, a, pro, a political candidate would bring himself into the, into a, 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 an election to test the viability of the candidate against another candidate. And when they find out and test the waters, they pull them. They pull the weaker candidate out. That's I think the definition you'll find, as an example. Well, let's attach that to a mailing. They promote a mailing, and they say, this is what we want to fight. When, in fact, they hand you the numbers of who you're going to call if you don't like this, the purveyors, the promoters of this dastardly bill. And then they wait to see what kind of response that they get. And it occurred to me that this mass mailing, even though it's coming under the color that it's helping community, is actually a stalking horse. Because what they'll do is if nobody responds to that mass mailing and this method is sitting there moving on, gun, on this method, on this uh, tactic, when you don't respond to that mail, they have the notice you're not going to respond against the deception, against the bad law. And they take your consent by not acting through it to say, go call and post your objection. And if you do post your objection, they listen to the quality of it. Remember... They're always doing data acquisition and analysis and how to perpetuate their up their occupation against you. And so this mailing on the surface looks like it's good. It looks like it's going in the right direction. In fact, it could have been it could be the preparation of the opposition that when you all don't respond, those are the that got the mailing, when you don't respond, they take that as your consent. And they say, we have no opposition to this, and here's the mass mailing proof. In fact, they are part of the mass mailing. And they're using it to find out what their opposition is. So they don't lose when they do this. They can only gain. And this is why it takes you to be vigilant. And I don't like it at all. I don't know why and where it came up somehow. Well, I know how I did it. You've got a bar association that allowed it, and you didn't say anything either. But that they can impose a trespass, and that that becomes a representation of, of your agreement when you don't respond to it. And then you see life hit you in the face. And every one of those things is the trespass you were supposed to respond to is not really a fair condition. And yet that's what we're up against. That's why I say it's going to take lots of us. We're all going to have a different interest if we ever come together really for ourselves. We'll all have a different interest just because we're all wired a little bit different. But that's going to be our strength. 
that's our mesh, if you will. We, we make a certain node in the mesh that we're going to cast as a group of people, all looking and interested to validate or verify or qualify or bring accountability to the wrong we see. But we, as we connect up to do this, we become a bigger and bigger net to be able to accomplish all that's coming into our face and blasting us right in the face. Anyway, I went off a little bit off of what I wanted to start here. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge will get you nowhere. This gentleman back to Plotinus uh, knew so. Uh, knowledge, if it does not determine action, is dead to us. Ha is a big, big truth. And it's, I mean, I, I just respond. I don't, it doesn't, this statement affects me not because I'm already working through that. I'm already realizing it. You can know all kinds of stuff, but without, without knowing how to do, what to do with it and to do something with it. And something that's important and relevant and material, like they sell us in the guidelines of legal. You're not effective and you're going to be dealt with by those that do make their knowledge and put their knowledge into action and determine, have their knowledge determine their action. And I mean, I can't say more. That way, if you applied that to what I've been telling you, is exactly how I, the analysis starts to go. We look for the information that's going to give us a direction to go, and then it informs us on what we might do. Our knowledge then comes together, the manifold knowledge of different subject matters start to build together to make a determination on what action will be taken, is how this works. And I'll tell you, I don't have a lot of mind for a lot of extra information, actually, where I used to. I told you I used to. There's no, I don't try, I try not to do, pursue the trivial. Trivial pursuit was a game. I try not to do that anymore. I used to be, do it and do be very well. I don't do that anymore. In one regard, I don't have the mind for it. Second, I don't have the interest anymore. And third, it gets us, it got me nowhere, actually, sitting around a board game. That was it. That was where it ended. And so we now do that on the Internet. We, we tend to go off on all these tangents, and we allow ourselves to be swallowed up in, in uh, the gossip, essentially, as we talked about before. And so knowledge that doesn't get put to action is dead to you, whether you want to agree with that. It's dead skin on your body. You can, you can, put, you can put it in a bag and carry it around with you, but it's just, it's just a burden. It's not going to do you any good against a real oppressor, against a real wrong. And we can make up all kinds of excuses about this, but the truth will, will be that you will be oppressed, you will be harmed. And so let me end that right there. Plotinus, pretty cool. Don't know if I agree with everything else he came up with. Again, these are um, the old dudes. They're actually not so old. <laughs> so in the time scale of things, they're not so old. But they are part of where we're told we came from, and it was a wisdom in people. And whether or not uh, we remember that is an interesting problem. Why wouldn't we remember this statement? And why wouldn't we keep that as close to our heart as we do lots of other things? A wholly less important. And one of these ideas of going through and learning knowledge and then putting it in practice, you also have the problem of missteps. You also have the problem of uh, you know, misaction. And so you have to look at all this. As I said, it's, if you put this in the war context, it's a little bit easier to ramp up what you're, how the, le the, the level you have to meet in order to do what you'll have to do with your knowledge. And like I said, if I work in the worst scale, I don't accept the worst scale. I just work the potential harm from the worst scale, and I protect against that harm. And any lesser harm or any lesser condition, I've got covered. It's natural. I don't have to worry about that part. That's why I go to that extreme, not to bring myself into a frothy mess over how bad it is. It's how you work the contingencies, the strategies, the tactics you'll work. And the reality starts to dictate how and what you pull out in order to make your objective, I can say it that way. I was asked to, to review a document, and thank you for this, but I... I'll just let you know, I don't have a lot of time to read lots of documents uh, to prove them out. And what I say here sounds a lot like other people. And it's because I told you, well, so I was asked uh, from my dog Rex, I think it was, uh, a couple times on the comments in the various places that you can post comments, that there was a gentleman that had written a book that uh, sounded a lot like what I was saying and wanted to know uh, what I had to, uh, what I had to think about it. And, um, 
a website to go to. And so I, I finally had a, a break in time to look at this. And the point on this, the reason why I really took any time here, but because status and, and the uh, statuses that are put upon you are very important on how we move through this and how you get vilified, how you how you are put into the criminal capacity. In other words, someone, uh, some authority, authorita, decides they have that authorita to actually just tell you, say you're a, defame you essentially in the civil side and call you some sort of a criminal. And that's it. Now you're done. It, it is what we're sort of talking about. Uh, yet we're also dealing in something called presumption. Not assumption. Presumption. And so, you need to research these concepts. But the uh, the the question was uh, me to review, and I don't, again, uh, I'm feeling a little bit out of place to review anybody's work. But at any rate, uh, I looked at it anyway, because it, if it's something to read or something to understand, uh, a source of information, then uh, I think it's important. And because it touched the status, because it sounded like what I've been talking about, and that that was a, a correlation that was made, and that that's being talked about, not the, my correlation, but that that correlation, this this information that I've been telling you relative to like the Civil War and the statuses and the changes uh, is very important to understand. It's very technical in some level to understand as well. You really have to kind of lose yourself in the study. And it's still not as clear as mud at some level. And and because of that, I've had to take a few decisions that has gotten me today in order to answer the muck and the mire that they get you in just like over they did over there at Bundy's uh, case, uh, Muck and Meyer got involved, right? And they messed everything up. How to look through all the Muck and Meyer, move it aside or filter it out, and get, stay on the narrow area that gets you through even the questionable spots. That the document that I was asked to, to, what, I guess critique, I suppose, that was called From Sovereign to Surf, Government by, tre by the Treachery of Deceptive, of words. It's written by a Roger S. Sales. Now, I did read it, and I ended up reading the whole thing, And I, but I did not read all the quotes. I read some quotes, but I did not read all quotes. Like today, I entered in the broadcast with a quote. When you look at who's saying those things, uh, those quotes are kind of dangerous if you just accept them for the good, a good premise. In particular, Abraham Lincoln's quotes. Those are pretty uh, interesting. And I can't explain all those to you. You're going to have to go through and really think about how the deception works. It's not just the deception of words. But going on to this document, from sovereign to serf, it's, um, it was on a subject matter of status. It's on a subject matter of terms. It's on a subject matter that's very important to understand. And so I felt it was uh, because of the request and because I sound a lot like this, I can tell you I sound a lot like this, this, uh, this discussion in this. We talk on, I guess I should say more, we talk on the same subject matter, from sovereign to surf. My link here is out of archive.org, and you can find it. It's a PDF link. You'll get it in the broadcast, blogcaster after the broadcast. And I just want to say a few things. I'm not going to go through this whole document and go for it, uh, you know, part for part. Uh, there's obviously some grammatical, I mean, literally a grammatical problems and nothing big deal. But there's a more serious problem in the use of some terms that I would say, if you read this, be very, I would say read this as an overview of someone's experience over a time that just predates my, my awareness of this whole condition and goes through this thing, and this is written in 2011, that identifies for you some valid things. So at the point of the man's experience, I have no comment. That is what it is. That is how he perceived it. That is what went on. You can take that to the bank the way he wants to have you say it or hear it. What he gets from that is also his, and I don't have a place to comment. What he gets to that relative to what I've researched, now we may have a little bit better discussion. But because this is somebody's interpretation, and we really do have an interpret, not just an interpretation of deceptive words, but what was really meant by the words? And I, I take this very seriously at the point I'm talking with somebody or about someone's work. I would rather talk to that gentleman. At some point, I don't have the time to be doing all this. But if there's a real critique to happen, I would want to read. What I've read could be okay, 
But I would want to read really what the underlying foundation for the state, some of the statements would be before I would say this is what I'm saying or that I would agree or disagree. And so we have a real problem in interpreting some of these things. And I'm not saying this to say he's completely wrong. What I'm saying is that when you look at the totality of what he's doing, he ends up in Argentina. He move, removes himself from the United States. He ends up having to deal with the IRS and comes out of his pocket for it. And therefore, to me, he, he gets out. I mean, he gets away and he feels comfortable with that. But for us that remain, it may not be totally how we need to take the from the knowledge we ha he has knowledge but do we want to take that and how do we want to apply it is really a big deal here one of the things i want you to as i'll give this out if you're interested in it it's a very serious study you need everyone nearly needs to do this his path is fine what he comes from it and where he goes with his information and how he finds a proof is fine in other words he points out that when he went he had because he had, was going to travel, he had to get uh, the what is the passport, and in the passport form, actually the passport re-up form, the renew form, he finds what he f feels is the proof, and I'll tell you, it's a part proof. It identifies there is a distinction, but in his discussion, he makes a problem for me in, in analyzing this thing because he uses a term up front called United States citizen that he then that is not and citizen of the United States another term and he misstates the one and doesn't prove it's in the statute in the other which starts to cause me trouble because I can't my for my word of power I can't equate them to be the same and so when you talk about a citizen of the United States or and I can't remember how this actually went, or citizen, or United States citizen, or United States person. These are all different. Like a United States person includes a corporation. That's not you, a man and woman. Uh, the citizen, by the term, means you're subject to something. And I would say, don't deny that you're subject to the power within which you you uh, sit. Your citizen, if I can say that. And I can't even say all these words. All these words are commerce related too. The closest I would say is you get into being an inhabitant, and that may even actually kick you out. But you have th these term studies are very serious problems. So I kind of get down to we're just a man and a woman. I get so to the point where I don't even know what to say at some level. For as much as I know, I know maybe I shouldn't say much of anything. Maybe that's the smartest answer. So from surf, from sovereign to surf is a look at how we've been, you know, we conceive ourselves. A, as sovereign, how the court cases would say the people are sovereign, but I, that's a trap too, and how we've been then moved into surf by the adoption through words of certain statuses that are inferior to what we should be. And I'm suggesting here today the best status you can be is the one that's inert to the system that has the power. Don't, don't do more than that. And, and I've explained through years how to do this. So what I would say about this document is you need to read it, you need to understand it gets, when it gets into the, into the court cases relative to statuses, understand that the slaughterhouse cases was about businesses as well. Now we're back to commerce. We're back to also labor. And so be very careful. You have to be able to an analyze these things for all those capacities that may be working. When you start seeing this, you get overwhelmed. I got overwhelmed. But you keep plugging away. And it'll force you, when you start trying to be, find out where you are relative to this thing that's been fabricated up, it squeezes you out. It mentally starts to squeeze you out. And another thing that was done that I think needed to not be done in this document, it made an assumption that it's inter the interpretation of what, it, what he found in the document of the passport was what reality is. In fact, I could not prove from the document that the only world in reality was what was being said there. In fact, I, could, I have another idea. There's a third, an unattached authority. But what I would ask you to do when you read this, consider, instead of coming up that you know so much on a foreign document, which is created by the government official, and it gives you two choices, and so you therefore only have one of those two choices to pass through, maybe the actual answer, at least to start with, is you ask the question of the official. And the trick there is to not give them any information about you. 
again, you're, you're inert to this until you can find it all attaches. And I'm going to tell you that's going to be a difficult road, but it's one that needs to be done. You need to do that. Instead of believing you know what these forms are because they fit into some belief system that you've developed because your research shows you it looks plausible and possible, and that's why I tell you it's possible or plausible. It doesn't mean that it is. You adopt a choice that's presented to you that actually still may not be valid. And this is where I say, I tell you, if you can identify that it, you don't fit, then maybe there was something that's unspoken that they still have to recognize in you. Acknowledge, whatever, however word you want to use, depending on how it works. And so for the, I don't, I appreciate this document. I appreciate the life and the lives that you'll read have been dedicated for decades to try and pull out how we got here. I cannot challenge or diminish or criticize that at all. What I can say is that some of the things that are being said may or may not be the fact. And I would be persuaded against buying in wholesale what I'm reading here, even though, as I've told you before, each one of us, it's including you all that do it, who do the research, you end up coming to this thing I've identified as the stinking abyss. And there is no way you can come to that stinking abyss and come to walk to the edge and look in and not have someone standing next to you that's found the same stinking abyss, even though they all may describe how they got there and that they what they're looking at differently. To that truth, I, I have to commit, that's the truth. How we describe it, that's a different thing. And that we describe it different creates a question of why we're really looking at the same thing. But coming to the stinking abyss... You've got an ally. I will, I will never, ever attack an ally that way. We may have a problem of getting there and describing it and a possibility of a misperception or a wrong perception or not enough information. But to that extent, I cannot deny that this is a something, this is a history lesson for the late uh, group of people that found out we were in an occupation, the way I would interpret it. The document that he tells you that explains the distinction and the status is, is correct. But I'm not so sure to adopt that as you is the way you would go. I think there's another step that has to be made, and not to diminish him at all. He did move out of the country. He didn't actually deal with the problem, or he didn't avoid the, avoid the problem so he didn't have to deal with it, like I've been suggesting that you set up for yourself. Very important. The status attaches, but if you can't get it, they can't get it to a sta attach. You don't assume it on yourself. They have, they really have a problem. They're either they become a real criminal, or you avoid, right? Not evade. And so I have a little difficulty. He's a he. I recognize his path. He did and start a bit more where I came in on taxes. That movement was already happening. In other words, I can't. I, when I came into this, I'm in the middle of living literally in the middle of nowhere, in the forest, if you will. And so I'm not, I decided long before this to go away, if you will. Just reduce my whole life, have a smaller profile in a place that's not very well inhabited and all that stuff. Well, I told you, and then there's some forcing, they bring you back in and you got to deal with things. And the tax movement, so called, was already in place and moving. And people, when I moved in uh, to see this, was introduced, I said, I guess, to it. People were getting nailed hard just about the time I'm looking at this. And I think that was impressive to me. I said, well, they're doing something wrong. And they're not explaining that very well. And I was not really sure what all that was. But it did pique my interest to be very careful and move not with the herd and not with the crowd. And that's a hard thing to, to deny, to, to figure out when... You're looking for one objective basis for everyone to follow. Looks like the herd and the crowd when it's not. It's actually, you really have to identify where the objective basis is and where the ideas and notions and good good, good uh, intentions but wrong paths are in people. That was instrumental in me looking with a much more keen eye to all this. And it got me to hear where I look at this document. I can't condemn it for what its history is telling you. I may not necessarily agree with that it's enough, actually. It sets you on a quicker path to understand the statuses. It lets the, gives you the cases. I've talked about all this behind the witch. That's why we sound similar to this. Why the, why, um, the email or the commenter may have been excited 
that there's this uh, guy out there that speaks very similar to me, and he is speaking very similar. We, I can see his path is very similar to mine. What we took away from this may be a bit different, though. And, and I can't say that being here is a, an advantage. I'm saying that's I'm still in the States. I still have to contend with this. But you hear through these years, I'm, I'm not bashful about stepping up once I learn the, the condition to address the condition. And there's not, I can just, because of that, I can see when people are talking and when they're actually taking the action. There's a, there's just a, a bright line that's written in the rock, in the foundation, and the bright line in the middle of that road you're supposed to be on. I can tell real quickly whether you're on that road or not. doesn't mean that you can't get on it if you're not. doesn't mean that I'm the only sayer about where the road is. But at some point, when you're getting harmed and beat down and you don't have a response, it means you probably made some mistakes. I'm not talking about being harmed in the first place and have to come to someone like myself to say, well, what do you, what do we, what do we do to stop it? Once you get tagged into something, you're going to have a little bit of trouble. These people don't want to let you loose. Government doesn't like competition. They don't like someone who they can't bring Guido out to, to force himself upon you. Look, listen to Venezuela. So, uh, from sovereign to surf is a document. I think it was valuable, and it's a quite a 260 something pages it, it, but it's a history lesson of what what someone did to come up with the determination he identifies some things they're the truth whether or not he actually interpreted put the, um, correctly to put them in the pra proper practice I'm not so sure I wouldn't follow him that far and I offer you a little bit more I offer that maybe where he ends is where you begin to relook at the condition to reorganize how you how this place has been constructed, where you may or may not be. I mean, I can actually look through his work and say, well, you, there's been an assumption made, a, not a presumption, an assumption made, and I can very well take the same words. He talks about deception of words. I can take those same words, not derogatory to the use that being done in the document, but when you take them outside of the document and you put them in practice in the world where they are working I could actually make a, a different and better definition over the words he found was a revelation to him and is a revelation but to you have to put it in its context and I don't know what to tell you on how you draw that bright line you have to read enough to be able to see there's still some outlying questions so let me end it right here I uh, believe from sovereign to surf will bring you up to speed quicker in a few hundred pages on this problem of the statuses that we're dealing with. We call them uh, the Fourth Amendment citizen will publish. This is what there underlies all this. The freedman. This is underlying all that. But how do I identify it? And he says the passport document, the renewal form, identifies a distinction between those characters and uh, p potentially free people. Now, I'm not so sure. But there is a path to start there. Once you understand this, it's kind of it's more like what I tell you. Can you look at two federal courts and know which one is a valid court? You go look at the statutes. I'm not. It's not my opinion. It's not your opinion. It's not a patriot's opinion. It's not someone who's dedicated his life to figure out what happened to this place and then comes out with a book on how to how what he thinks happens. It, it has to be what's in the context of the writings from which, within which, this thing that's against you works. And when you start looking at how those terms are made, if you don't have the basics for how we got there, you won't understand what you're reading. You won't even understand how to parse what's being said in this document. You won't understand the questions outstanding. And to me, I'm not saying I know. I'm saying there are questions outstanding. In one way, if you were to really analyze this, you could actually pull out the questions that still need to be proven. And then I offer that proof is very a serious endeavor because you don't want to think that you're involved. This is strictly like, an, again, the investigative reporter. What is the actual understandable position of the authorita claiming authority versus what you think it is based on your assumptions of what you read that author does in their paperwork. Because one of the terms, I'm trying to figure, it's not coming to me, 
I can almost see that the term that they, that the passport says he, that um, this docu this author, Roger Sayers, I think it was, Roger Say Sales, Sales, um, uh, says, I can almost, I, with another set of document, uh, di uh, proofs, I can almost see that the two parties are just kind of different, different characters of the same status. And, and I can almost now see, and I have to give credit to him there for making me think about this maybe, there's another status that's not being spoken to. And that is critical to see because that is the same answer in your motor vehicle code. And that's what I tell you the joke on me is. I read the motor vehicle code in the state I was looking at. Two, and the motor vehicle code is typically, it's like a Bible size document. It's a code that looks like a Bible in a, in a small form book. I read a document like that two and a half times before the joke on me now. This is my misperception when I'm reading. When I realized I would not be found, my exemption's not in that book. When I started to understand jurisdiction and authorities and the, uh, and the extent of the jurisdictions and the authorities, I realized I'm reading for, I'm finding, trying to find the exemption, the exception within a document that doesn't pertain to me or anything I do. Now, wasn't that a revelation? I don't know, maybe you don't appreciate that. For me, it was a big revelation. One of those when you kick back on your chair and laugh at yourself. I've been looking for my exemption all these months and it's not going to be in here. I'm looking in the wrong place. And, when you, and that wasn't the point. The point was it finally clicked. It took me two and a half, if you think I get this, I've gotten this stuff quick, it took me two and a half readings through the size of a Bible document to figure out this whole thing wasn't relevant to me. The problem, other problem was it, I didn't know how to, how to deal with that. And the revelation then came, the more important one was, this is limited. The, the further test was, could I find how and to what extent? And I think and because I had that insight then, that revelation and the insight, I've now applied that limitation. Is the same thing I'm telling you here on this passport document. There may be a document, there may be a thing they have to honor that's not listed. I've talked to you, it may come in the form of a savings clause, and it, those are like five words with a comma. That's as simple as that one is. If you miss that, you miss the trick. In this case, there may be a status that the government has to honor that it. there's no form for in the application again. So you have an application. There may be a paper of acknowledgement that you can acquire. I'm not saying it's there. I have not gone down that path. What I'm saying is, when you read this document, how you went from being the ruler to being the serf over a manager, you'll see they did it with words. You'll see they did it in statuses. That is not going to explain the condition that uh, the, the from the from how it's being utilized, the authorities underneath it. That's what I speak to. Or I try to speak to. And you get to those. And now you're going to come from a place, well, you'll start to identify where there may be a, this document may fall short. I guess the point is, this is not a manual on, that you read and you understand completely. This is, gets you faster to what you need to know is at play. I guess I can put it that way. And I, and I really tread lightly here. I do not ever want to step on someone's experience or life explained to you. I can tell you that part is, is just take that to the bank for him. Watch carefully, though. You know, I think the one that caught me very quickly, right up in the front of the document, he uses one term within his explanation that does not come up in the quote he takes from the law, the code, the statute. And that, those two terms, the one that's in the statute and what he called it, make all the difference in interpret, correctly interpreting that part. And I said, well, if he doesn't see that, I better watch out and, and be careful that he's not commingling others, and when you mash this stuff up, it may allow him, and I think it does, to come to the determination he can identify for you in the in the passport document what you are. And I don't think that's necessarily the, the case. And each one of you, that's going to be the decision each one of you will have to make. What is your status relative to that very important traveling document called the passport? And I think he found something to see, and I want I want you to know about it, but I don't know if I want to give full credit for 
what it means. I think it gets you right to where you start to show you how much study there really is about what they've done to us. This document may be the point that gets you up with some errors, but gets you farther faster than not reading it or trying to find the nonsense that you hear on the Internet as trying to explain it. I don't even think the courts understand this, this concepting. I've resolved it in one, partially, and not the passport side, but how the government comes against you. And they put you in an, in an obligated subject status. And my discussion with you is how you remove yourself from that status, have a better word in your mouth about how it applies, and why land disposal law, as we know the mining law, your patent stuff, you look at all that, it shows the big chasm that the government can't cross. And when they do, they become those agents. Not the government, the man or woman that tries to use the color of authority to come after you, jump the chasm. He becomes evil Knievel and pops the chute too soon. That's who you nail. And that, this land law shows us the distinction about where, how, what we might be reading is accurate to its application, but we're not in there. And so there has to be a different provision, and at this time, relative to passports, I've not done a focused study to figure out where that might be. I haven't had a need. I don't anticipate the need. And so, I mean, it's like I said, the knowledge I need is only what I carry now. And I've opted to say there's our statuses out there that allow certain things to happen, in particular for these terms in this document. Like citizen of the United States, he even identifies the Civil War. He identifies the 1871 Act. The Act identifies the Civil Rights Act. He identifies the one in 71. He identifies the one in 66. And you look at all that. You have to go read all those. And he hasn't, again, I guess for me, his book doesn't show how we've been defeated in what I tell you. In fact, if you have given my, my view is still valid relative to what he's saying, he missed something. And, it's the, and it ends up re reflecting in the error of using the term. This deception of words document misstates a term, brings two different terms consistent when they're not. And he doesn't catch that. And that leads him along a path that's, I can't say is ab abjectly wrong, but it leads to assumptions that are, may not be correct and weren't enough, actually, when the end of the day, weren't enough to protect him to stay home, uh, if you will, in the United States. Notwithstanding all his desire to be here and want to be here and, and, and enjoy what we thought it was, I, I, my view is we're not completely protected because we have an occupier you know, the Civil War didn't go away, folks. I mean, this is the problem. The Civil War changed this place. No judiciary is going to determine different than that. And so you need to take a different look. And I think when you find out within the context of all the jurisdictions I keep talking to you about, how you what records you don't allow yourself to make or be made against you and the establishment of something more simple before anybody declares and make it certain before and in, in place before, the record you make, before they can get you, you're going to be sitting a whole lot better than what you see coming out of the no mere knowledge of the status of how it looks as if this document talks about how you went from sovereign to serf. My question on this, how, what if we didn't go to serf? What if we do that in the present day and present action because we're ignorant of some of the good stuff he talks about in this document? That, to me, is a rhetorical question because I think that's exactly what we do. The word application here, I noticed, is not in his document. What application does? He does talk about contract, I think. And it, it's a form, application is a form of contract, but it's on your instance. And it's on, again, let's go back to the Motor Vehicle Code. The reason why that becomes relevant is because you go down to the government and tell them you're a, you're a person subject to the Motor Vehicle Code. In other words, when you go look at deeper in the rules, you're in commerce using the road for profit in commerce and you don't and you're uh, you're not there's no claim there's no way to claim within that uh, regulation authority your underlying ingress and egress rights you're only telling them that you're a business doing commerce on the highway that's all you're doing in your application you apply an applique you stick it to yourself this is the same thing that's happening in the passport what do you stick into yourself is an important question to resolve not on, a pres on an assumption of the terms you can identify because you believe you identified how the codes are speaking. This is a major problem, actually. 
I've seen so many people make this wrong. In fact, I've come to the conclusion they've made it convoluted. Even they don't, I don't think these people understand it. When you press that, you actually have a place, a, 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 a sanctuary in a way. Your own saint, your only, your safe haven. You get admiralty, safe harbor. You create that because now they they can't really, they don't have the authority to touch you. And then you say, but I still have the right of ingress and egress. What you you're not doing is you're not saying I'm this and I'm that, like I've seen lots of people do. I declare I'm all these things, and we want to know if you can why you're not why you're violating us. Is it the wrong way to go? It's more like when you're asked to make a presentation, you can ask questions, and there's an administrative obligation to tell you the truth. There's an administ not civil, not criminal, administrative duty to, to disclose to you things when you properly ask them. And so you start to understand there's a really a methodology behind everything you do, and certainly relative to any governmental thing, that this, this document, I think, goes to the point when it should have started asking questions. Because I'm not so sure after reading, even reading it and applying what I know that I could come to the assumptions that have come to and that I'm wondering, do I even need to do this? And when you find out that you may not even have to do this, this is what I've been telling you about land disposal law again. I'm going to repeat myself. But if you have an ingress and egress right, and they can't, and you all know, anybody that's been researching, they can't take a right to reduce it to a privilege. Why don't we certainly lead with that? You have this statement, this term is not understandable, this term is not understandable. He points out in this document there's a disclaimer as to how complicated things are. Your state law says that you're supposed to be laws that a common man uh, can understand. Why don't you just use the common man status and say, so why don't you explain to me, the common man, what you actually mean? Uncomplicate this document. What I'm asking you to do is don't make assumptions you know what that document says when you didn't author it. And that's another maxim. And so, I guess if I'm saying it, you have to pull back in all this. And I'm also suggesting uh, that you read this document if you want to understand the statuses that they're using against us, because they roll down to the states as well. As I've told you over and over again. I'm not confused by this document, but you might be if you accept it as the truth because we sound similar. And this may actually be the example of, well, there's still more to learn. For as much as you may not understand that you see written in this document, there's a whole lot more to understand and learn before you head out. And not to kick you back, but this is the problem of living in a prison that's been built up around us. That's not a prison. There is no spoon. I guess I'll go back to the Matrix the example. There is no spoon. You invoke the spoon when you do all these things that weren't relevant to you. The problem on that other side is that you may be lied to. And that's why I invoke the administrative duty that I just mentioned for the re requirement for this. I think I read across a long time ago, the UK has some interesting cases relative to someone's administration of your questions relative to an agency discussion or department discussion, the violations that can happen. You might want to look those up. I didn't. I forgot all about that till just now. They're very interesting. Very interesting insight. I almost appreciate the UK, Canadian type decisions that are made because they're more instructive at some level of what we're never told in the United States on really what's supposed to work underneath this that has failed to work because no one really presses it. Those things I learn, I press, we get a different response is all I can tell you. Relative to the status you're sovereign to serf, your sovereignty is that you don't really bring yourself to serfdom. It's not imposed upon you. It's not imposed upon you. Actually, you do things that bring it on you. Now, then there's that criminal side in the government that just wants to harm. Uh, it's an occupier. It's just an evil occupier. It comes through many forms. Uh, those are part of the battlefield thing. I amp up what you're going to be doing because you're actually in that environment. But when you do that, you're going to you start learning, like I've been telling you, how to come up with the responses. Let me just put it, it's not the same answer. Remember last week I was talking about the video where someone was stopped by the cops and the cops are, are um, commanding the dialogue. And I said, you gotta, you got to change that dynamic without fighting with them. And so I told you one of the techniques of one of many. Now, don't get lost in that one. But 
one of the, they they say I don't know you know I don't know you you could be a criminal. What did I tell you the answer was? That's the dynamic I'm talking about here. You throw in a question before you put in an answer or a commit. And, and say, it's the same dynamic over and over. No matter where I go, it's just you got to just look carefully at what's going on. So I guess maybe I've talked plenty on this. Um, uh, from sovereign to surf. This is about the status of citizen United States that everyone's afraid of. U.S. persons should be actually more you're more afraid of. U.S. citizens should, you should be more of. That underlies this the idea of property, freed people that you're not, that you could be. All that stuff is in here. What I'm concerned with is that if you, any of you that have read this, uh, that we take it as the definitive reason. All he did is found a, doc, a statement in a document that he design, uh, that he sees how you can see there's a distinction. And I'm offering that maybe that's there, but there may be more, and you're not part of that either. Then there's an, but because of that, there's an obligation to provide for you that's unstated. And this requires, they won't tell you this because they're not, that's not their jurisdiction. You have to know your rights. If you see that little point I just said, it's on you, you realize how they can exploit you. This really is, you only get the rights you assert. And if you assert none, you take no action, you have none. It's really simple, actually. If we cut through all the, you know, what, the conspiracies and all this other stuff. Yeah, they're all there. If you, Not all of them, but they're there. But in fact, they're hard-baked into the system. And since they are hard-baked as well, this this balancing thing that goes on, this uh, yin and yang, because they're hard-baked, they're also able to be identified and not ev evaded by the authority that tries to impose them, is what I try and tell you how to set up in your record. Uh, so, uh, sovereign to serve you, it'll get you to the idea of what the statuses are, the United, from the federal context as well, from the federal context, and then you got to apply that to the states, but then understand the veneer, the veneer of servitude the, the Civil War put on. There's still a path through it. I still see a, path, a couple paths, actually. And then there's more to think about, if you wanted to. Most of us won't, won't be dealing in... Uh, in a passport side, I don't think. Maybe maybe you all travel more than I do. I, I don't know. But they do trickle down to how you're being mistreated without uh, your consent. You allow it because you know so much instead of asking more or positioning your, your status in a place that it isn't touchable until they can prove it. Like, like one of the responses I've told you, these statuses are tied directly to the IRS. There's a reason for that. And this document comes through the tax movement, if you will, the Patriot Tax Movement. Some very big misunderstandings came through that. In fact, I think people are victims. I hear people today that speak through the victimization of that, not because of the Patriot Movement. These people are just trying to figure out what the heck the problem was. But they took action before they fully understood, or they took assumptions upon what they thought they could figure out because they thought so, not the way the, the system deals with all this. A system that doesn't want to see the escape from the prison. And so lots of things were done. Lots of people took action on what they thought they knew. I'm watching all this as it's like a it's a train wreck, a plan, a predictable train wreck. And we hear the today we're still hearing people speak through that, which are totally wrong in what they how they perceive and what they're doing because what they did is they went in and tried to think that they could tell what was on the form and what it meant without asking first, without challenging. More importantly, if it became important. Because the passport's on your request, if you want to go somewhere, you're going to have to get one. And since the Patriot Act, if you want to go down the street, down to the grocery store, I think you may actually have to get one now, right? I mean, the way they got it worked out. But is that true? And so that's a request. It's not an application. It's a request upon the filling out of an application. Where you got to go get a regulable right, if you will, the privilege, that is an application. So that's a matter of study whether or not you even have to. This is how I apply to the miners, a mining issue. Do you have to get a plan of operations, a permit, uh, and a bond to go work an uncommon mineral claim? Well, if you don't want to agree with me on the grant, you go to the rules, the rules that implement the authority, the lawful authority, and you go read the rules the agency's authority doesn't extend to be able to ask. Why would you just offer an application for to file a plan of operations? Is the same answer. Why would you go in where the jurisdiction of a motor vehicle code, in their rules, not their law, the code, it doesn't say that in the code, says that in the rules is, is for businesses operating on the highway for profit, 
why would you go fill out an application for that permission when you're actually not doing that? When you're not the person liable to tax, like the commissioner is supposed to d define, when he or she finds, when the office finds, you're doing an activity subject to tax. And then what have I told you? They have to provide due process. You're not hearing any due process in this document either. I mean, there's, I guess, a lot to say. But anyway, so that's my uh, uh, my dog Rex. Thank you for the request. I would ask you that I don't want to do lots of reading of document to proof them. I, you're going to have to do. It's a faster path if you just go do what I'm telling you during the broadcast to go re-research re what you think you know. The on the thing you want instead of this generic kind of a thing that actually can be kind of confusing. If I come from the standpoint that I'm just a man or a woman, and I have right to exist, and I have right of ingress and egress, and I have all these rights, if you will, that doesn't affect, it's not unlawful, so there's no interest in the government at all, why would I be interested to fill out anything that brings that scrutiny on me? And if it is imposed, why wouldn't I do the first thing to challenge that it's wrongly, wrongfully, I should say, wrongfully is a crime, wrongfully even asked? And so there's a di I've taken a different view of all how we've been doing it wrong. And when I've applied more of where I go now, with my observations now, there's a lot less interactions and a lot shorter interactions that, with uh, people that think that they have an authority in so-called government. But really, anywhere. I mean, it just applies across the board uh, how to address someone. And it cuts down on your vulnerabilities to being exploited. I guess that's the point, getting back to the... Protocols of the Elder Design, how people can exploit you. You really have to know more about yourself. You really have to start taking cognizance of the tactics and techniques of deception. And either avoid it while you can, or denounce it, throw it down, and then bring accountability when it gets uh, beyond uh, just assertion and into trying to be imp imposed. So I, I don't know, again, um, there's a whole lot behind what I tell you here behind a woodshed. It comes from the same experience you'll read are very similar, I can't say the same, very similar experience that you read written in uh, from Sovereign to Surf, but it's it's con my uh, my look and view and interpretation has uncovered a, a not so definitive position, but something that di directs me and any one of you into a less jeopardy while still doing what we all say we have right to do, but appears to be something that has been taken away. And that part, now we start touching on the criminal. We cannot uh, commingle that criminal imposition with what we're talking about relative to what you you see your rights would be, again, in lawful activities, the things that aren't going to harm people, and then reduced, I mean, foundationally in the land law. There, there's a big distinction to be made. And uh, the terms and deception of terms is a truth. But that doesn't mean that they're a handicap or that they can con be continued to be used against you when you know. All of you all that know is one thing. Those that take your knowledge and put them into an action to protect yourself, now that's what that's what we what this Plotinus was talking about, isn't it? What I tell you behind the woodshed, knowledge is not power. Knowledge applied is power. I've been saying this forever. I didn't get it from Plotinus. I'm glad he's there. Makes me look Maybe even, maybe I'm more of a philosopher than I thought. Or maybe I'm just some guy that finally grew up enough to figure out that uh, I could be played, and I didn't like that, and that wasn't helping me or bringing me to any any good. And I suppose what's not good for me in that regard is not good for y'all. And that requires, just experience requires, you take action. And so let me, I said I'm going to stop talking about this. I'm going to stop. We're moving on. Moving on to why... <laughs> the backup of this why we might be considering less considerate of the things we ought to be considerate of uh, it's done to us and then it's not an excuse either we still have to have the right and more correct answer damning JAMA not pajama but JAMA J-A-M-A study finds link between fluoridated water and low IQ in children Despite the overwhelming mass of scientific literature and studies showing the harmful effects of ingesting fluoride, those who question it or advocate for the cessation 
of fluoridated water are labels as kooks and conspiracy theorists and shouted down by the mainstream. Uh, enough. Folks, just there's another proof here. I've been telling you that the system knows if they can diminish you in any way, even even if they take your little one, harm your little one, so that you become less politically interactive, uh, so that you, can, you can't protect yourself anywhere but protecting your pride and joy, now diminished. This is the treachery that's out in the world. And so we're another proof, for those of you interested, that fluoride's uh, now coming from a supposed reputed authority for this stuff shows that fluoridation is no good. If you're being affected before the fact, if maybe I didn't, myself, didn't get fluoridated, I missed it, let's say, I'm not underneath the effects of that. Maybe I'm thinking a little bit different. Maybe I'm going to look like a weirdo, some of, some of you. Maybe I'm going to speak beyond things that you might be able to think that you're capable of. doesn't mean you're not capable. This is the thing I, I think I, I learned from my problem when I was uh, biologically damaged by myself in fighting a fever, uh, in a fever that's fighting an infection that was going to kill me. I told you about that. Where I literally lost, lost all my memory. I mean, it just vap vaporized into a fog. I came to here today after that fog. It was like I was cleared out of this stuff. So those of you that come from a fog, even a chemically induced or biologically induced, I think you can restart some of this stuff, if this is any kind of an help. But here we are. We're, we're finding out after all this time, instead of uh, now they want to impose upon you the precautionary principle. They didn't want to do it before, but they'll do it now if they get the agenda passed for it. But they don't want to do it to you for your health. That now there's a study that, if you didn't know it, everyone who's studied this knows this is the problem. What I'm saying is you take this information, uh, lickety-split to a place where you can actually put it in action and put it, give force and effect to these things. These are evidences. This is a notice to you that you're diminished if you're dealing in fluoride and other things, folks. It's on and on and on. We talk about it all the time. So why would you, why would you be in this condition? Maybe it's fluoride, folks. Maybe that's one of many. Many, many things. And that's still not an excuse. And if it is, I'm here to help whomever. And I would, I would want to push harder. I'm a, I get real frustrated about the length of time things take. Once you, once you see stuff, folks, it's like, why does this stuff take so long? But you know, I'm a world, it's like I'm walking around in a big societal muck. And I have to wait till some people crawl out. It takes like quicksand trying to get you, everyone out of quicksand. I just have to help tug and pull and bring support and try to get someone to, they have to crawl out on their own. It takes time. And on the other hand, those people that are really see it, well, I don't, well it's a whole different, it's like getting in a race car. We're having, we're just racing around doing what we need to do. And so that's the big difference, whether or not maybe you're affected or not, but that's not an excuse. If you are affected, find a way to focus yourself out of being affected. Find ways to fix that part or re, uh, repair it a bit. And be careful. Uh, I don't even know. Like All this stuff is news that comes back around. I don't even know. Uh, head of America's largest organic food fraud scheme sentenced to 10 years. Showing you that within the system and the licenses, there's ways for people to exploit everybody. Like I was ex finally got it. I finally had to grow up into the truth and reality of this harsh world we live in. That's We do this to ourselves as well. you got to understand that. That there's people out there that will exploit everybody. And there's supposedly a government institution that caught this. And a judge that oversees the problem. And now some guy goes to, to years. I guess it wasn't the 10-year penalty wasn't enough to stop organic food fraud. That it diminishes the entire system. That, uh, well, so there's that's government. That's how that thing works. If that, given this is now the proven case, your organic food wasn't organic. You've been eating, and this thing, this food thing went through all kinds of foods. It's now what I look at the labels. Of, how do you, when you see corn, you got to know it's 98, or what, 96 or 98 percent GMO. you, you got to either stop eating corn, uh, processed corn, or, or go harvest it and make your own stuff. I, I, I don't know. And that's the other point. We are in a society that will allow contamination even beyond even this much, because someone's willing to chance going to 10 years to prison for it, for billions of dollars now, but uh, they, they're not going to be able to pay back the damage, even though it was identified after the effect, that is on you too, because you've been eating all this food and being diminished even further. 
that it becomes more and more important for you to take responsibility and attempt to try and, if you can't grow your own, find it from locals, the local people, to help to grow for you. That you know is or really organic. Remember now, some organic, and I'm not talking even the label, because that's again to pollute so much. They allow pollution in organic through because it's federally regulated. When you go to find someone who, beyond the titling of what organic is, is truly organic, it's kind of tough in a way. Uh, but uh, you find those people, that's why you buy local. And then I would add on top of that, because this becomes a thing that came through the Twitter again, over repeats, and the Fed. Folks, start using gold and silver coin. Start go using things of substance that people worked for in value to trade. That's how you can tell a real a real money, uh, opposed to the currency. Oh, that's right, Gary L. and uh, uh, Jerry Day, I think. Perfect. Go read that. Go find that video from Jerry Day's current one about currency. Perfect. Go go listen. You want to end the Fed? I've told you how. He says uh, stop using currency. I say go to gold and silver. You're going to do that when you deal with arm's length transactions between people. The farmer that actually does organic to buy organic because you can't trust the federal system because it's diminishing you. And these people use your diminishment. These people out there use your diminishment to their advantage. And when they finally give you enough problems, they're going to profit from you. As I've been telling you, they win on both ends, whether you're going in the right direction or not, or they're going to win. The, the, the system is set up that it, it wins. And, and so I don't know what to say. It wins until you apply what I didn't all tell you earlier in this broadcast. The things I've seen that didn't get into that document that is a way of approach that I've found to be better to distance yourself from a lot of this. Again, you've got to take responsibility for your things, and it's getting increasingly hard to be, as I guess I could say the word pure as you would like in this world anymore. But once you get affected, see, they're going to come after you for all these replacements. They apparently can't kill off enough people to get the organs. China researches to grow replacement organs for humans in genetically modified animals. Folks, I can't tell you how many years, two couple years ago, two, three years ago, I told you this was once they, I told you, it's been in the news now. Once they actually considered they would think about the, uh, the ethics of this, it was done. This was coming. And so recently the Chinese startup named Quahan Biotech raised $20 million to develop replacement organs for humans. The smallish deal would hardly have rated a headline except for the fact that the Hangzhou Hu a based gene editing company is aiming to grow those organs in pigs and other animals. We've heard them on the past uh, broadcasts. Uh, if successful, such transplants could well transform me medicine. Remember, the Biodiversity Treaty agrees to genetic modified organisms. You have to understand it. The environmentalists who want to tell you that they're environmentally protecting you and your existing environment are absolutely lying to you. It's another setup for the takedown. Genetic modification is part of the biodiversity treaty. If you don't understand how they take you out. At any rate, so here it is. They're infecting the biodiversity treaty. And thanks to a unique confluence of need, money, timing, and culture, culture, China is poised to lead the way in developing as they translated the economy over to China, folks. It was all done. Your country, the United States of America allowed all that. And so here's that's your future. I'm just I tell you, you can learn to you can learn learn the future behind the woodshed. Now, FC. Okay, so all these uh, organisms uh, that you're going to be failing, they get to mess up your brain. They'll just grow a pig brain for you. You just be a trans brain 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 transplant or, or some organoid. Remember, they just want you moving around and healthy so they can continue to sell you stuff. And they don't need much. Even if they just put your monkey brain, you're going to go look for your bananas, and then they'll go the, and then by that night you'll be by the on the street corner looking for the hooker, right? I mean, this is all in the news. This is all what's going on. Is a little bit out there, yeah, but you can see it's going to be possible. That's the that's the and the people are moving it forward. That's I think the thing that it terrifies me a bit. And, and and I don't see much response to any of it. It's kind of even more the real terrifying thing. So uh, so FCC now 
of the scrutiny. It takes people to be pushing, 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 not just knowing so much, not just knowing the stuff would harm you, but pushing in the right places in the proper ways to actually cause an action to happen. And then a response to that action is really what you're looking for, not just an action that falls dead. FCC investigating cell phone radiation. You think they would have done this way ahead of time. You think they would have done this ahead of time and looked at the harms. But see, the government set up for commerce and to perpetuate commerce under the plausible affidavits that, that no harm is being done by products and corporations, whatever. This test, which has been, was paid for by the Tribune, so was paid for by the Tribune, uh, this is where, this is where uh, press, the press should actually be that, what pillar it used to be. This is where I think if you notice what this, this uh, pre uh, publisher, pu the press, did here to press this and make a test pressed on the FCC to have to make the test. Th and this is what a, the press should be doing instead of what we see today. It's all kudos in a way to the Tribune for conducting this test and paying for it. And I, as I assume, maybe it's a fallen assumption and digitization problem about how this all works in publication. I suspect that more uh, papers, that I'll say papers, publishers that do this will start to get a better following. And I don't know if that's a model for them to start getting back into. But if you get a pr the press that actually starts to show that they're testing things that are not testable and move governmental agencies to do things that they hadn't done before to help protect people, I think more people would be conducive to being loyal to reading what they have to say. There's a danger that these things could be set up, but in this case, uh, it, it only causes a question which causes a response from the authorizing agency, which I've told you needs to be done. What you won't hear in this is you won't hear them going after the standards the FCC was using, and I don't know whether or not those are adequate or not. What I'm saying is that's how they've been able to get this thing through because I don't think that the testing agencies have on their tests certain things that need to be there that will be will require people to assert that their failure is not a proper test, not adequate and meaningful for the authority to really look at it. But the Tribune had conducted according to federal guidelines at an accredited lab produced a surprising result, radio frequency radiation exposure from iPhone 7, one of the most popular smartphones ever sold, measured over the legal safety limit and more than double what Apple reported to federal authorities from its own testings. When you read this through, there's actually more radiation coming out from other companies. It's, uh, so the point here is that someone did a test. It happened to be the press. I think it's their proper place. They found that the marketed the product the marketed products exceeded the regulatory guidelines, causing the FCC to have to go back look at those produced products. My problem is, is I don't think this radiation has the proper standards in a couple of areas. Like I think the main tests are for thermal harm, and there's harms that we now know of that are outside of that. It would be a perfect time to jump in now, based on this now question that the FCC failed, to say, well, we, we don't think your standard's any good. We want to bring that back up. We want to bring that whole problem back up to have a review before you do this test. Now, this would just be a radiation test, so that's just the product output, not the harm. But here's how you start to pull back what I've been telling you. Notice in the news, this is in the, in the play, for those of you in 5G and whatever, any radiated device, you have the ability to jump back in and be a part of the standard setting that I don't think has been done. Well, it was done, but, but to the benefit of commerce and the company, see? And we didn't understand that dynamic. We're still, we're still here to the point, as I told you, it came to me very clearly on how the dynamic is reading all the stuff I've ever read that, that you we are not free to be quiet and the standards will be set where we are and I've told you part of the experience I have going through Jefferson Mining District and making so-called comments we actually do coordination it's a little bit different a little more empowering but even so just if you reduce what we do to comment it has stopped all kinds of stuff now we we do the very same thing there in those standards relative to public land management as I'm asking you to do in other subject matter areas and would be for the FCC. We question whether or not the standard was adequate and meaningful. Uh, the, the standard that the court's going to look at. We don't even have to argue it. We just say this is this is a problem. This is you came up to this determination. This this effect caused this, and that's not good. So you're when we point out that your standards are inadequate. 
if they didn't come out to a fraudulent outcome. We, you were standing there being the witness to the crime. And in every case so far that we've been able to do it and be there, we have elim just eliminated the agency's action to harm people. That's not the answer. The, it needs to stop, ultimately, but that's a start, I guess, is my point. No one's been doing this kind of thing. No one worked out, as I was saying on a Twitter, the unorthodox approach, which in some regards is not so unorthodox, but it comes by way of a different method than I think anybody understood to be done. So in, at least for a while, that becomes your another protection for you, as I can tell you, don't, don't come jeopardize yourself. You don't come by the door they want you to come by. You may come by a door, but you have another, you know, you come through the door, but you step sideways. So whatever they thought that was coming down the aisle, you're not going down that same aisle. You're going down a different path. You're coming in and going up or whatever. You do what you do different. You take oppor you take advantage of the opportunity, and then you step aside what they expect, but you're on point, and you're on the facts, and you're on the law of it. And you get to the obligations and duties. In other words, it's no different than you being instead of a cop, and they want to command the conversation how to how to change it. You, they want you to be the victim to their to their oppression. You step aside really quick by pointing out that they're failing a duty. But it has to be the you have to state that right correctly. In the case of the example is, I don't know you. You could be a criminal. Well, you're a uniform, unless you're not a cop, and then you're and then you're impersonating a cop. You're a cop, and your duty was to, what, not impose guilt upon me. Your duty was to presume me innocent. And then you're back to what? The probable cause. And since you haven't stated a probable cause and you used that lame excuse that you don't know me and you didn't give me the presumption of innocence, you just committed extortion and felony. I think changes the conversation just a little bit. It's the same thing you do in these comments. You come in and say, not, you just don't say, oh, I don't like this thing that's happening, oh, this radiation's too much. I would come in and say, well, we have new evidence that your standards may not be adequate. And then you press them hard and long and persistent on that. So here they are. It doesn't matter. They're, they're finding out they've been radiating your brains. I've been saying get rid of all the iPhone is how, you know, these phones are how they're doing it. Well, it doesn't matter, folks. China's going to make you a pig brain. It won't matter. Just go ahead and keep that thing stuck to your head. Keep injecting your little ones with uh, vaccines that uh, looks like the aluminum migrates to places that's no good for them. Keep uh, using fluoridated water. Don't find another way to get rid of cavities or keep them down. But maybe consider baking soda. No, you can't do that. Heck. No, we'll irradiate ourselves, and it's okay, folks. They're going to make money on you, and some insurance company will make lots of money replacing your, your brain with an organoid brain or some monkey brain or a pig brain. doesn't matter. And maybe you agreed, you agreed to that when you weren't so sharp about all this stuff. And so what's, what about this FCC stuff? What about this radiation? What are they doing? Another thing in the news, I mentioned the 5G and all that. You think that they measured that any better? You think these things are coming out to do any better? And what, for what purpose? You think it's all your, oh, you're on it because you complain? No, this thing's a rolling freight truck and it's going to get its way. We have the evidence. Now, UPS quietly using self-driving trucks for months. UPS announced on Thursday that Adventure Capital Arm has made a minority investment in Too Simple. The announcement also revealed that since May, two simple autonomous trucks have been hauling UPS loads on a 115-mile route between Phoenix and Tucson. And I don't know if I ever got to the report, or I did report on it. The, UP, uh, the um, USPS, the, the Federal Postal Service, told everybody they were going to go from Phoenix to Dallas or something. They've been doing that test as well. Why do I say that relative to 5G? Because that's one of the only two purposes for, for 5G was this autonomous vehicle trans, uh, communication links. So if, if you can com continue to complain or you can start becoming effective in the complaint, don't have the knowledge of the harm. You have to have the knowledge that you put into action that stops it to become effective. Otherwise, you're going to see a lot of these trucks going down the road. And I, and I just tell you the future. I told you the past. In the past, they make these corridors. I think at some point you're going to see a whole lane of trucks uh, both going and coming and going. They will, mod they will modify these highways so that you're not involved because you're the problem. Remember, I've talked all about this. 
So here's a notice that they're going to, they want to radiate you. They're going to need the power to communicate with these autonomous trucks that have been running up and down the road. They've been testing, testing them. And uh, so you're going down up and down the, the, the highway. No one's checked that for a problem. And then when they did, and they said, oh, well, there's no thermal damage, was that enough? Is, your, is what you have to challenge? Is this what I've been telling? I've been telling people this uh, who've, uh, who've been discussed an interest in the 5G for years now. I don't know that anybody's taken me up on how you apply that. Uh, so I don't know more to say than when I had a friend, a colleague of mine, uh, assert that look in a local place, it certainly caused a stir, and they backed off uh, two things uh, that they were going to plan on doing. So that's not done either, right? There's more things that could be done and, and persistent because these people do only as much to back off where they can get away with it, and then they wait for you to go to sleep again. And until we shut those doors completely, as I've been telling you, make the laws to shut them down, to get the laws made to shut them down, in, even in policy. Uh, they're going to, the oppressor, the attacker is going to sit there waiting in the weeds, waiting waiting for you to, to take a snooze. And then he'll take a shot at you. So, 5G is here. The FCC now has made rules and regulations. They never went back to check that these, the, 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 they allowed the corporations to be innocent, that they were going to make devices that complied. And it's all a lie. You, you're not getting that benefit of innocence, are you? But you should be, right? This is the whole point, I guess, about the cop on this. The cops telling, "I don't know you," and I'm presuming you guilty. No, no, no. You're, everyone's, even corporations that harm you are presumed innocent until they get caught. And that's another type of problem, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. And some good things happen around that, but at any rate, not the point here. The, they're showing you, they're rolling this thing out. We're showing, they're showing you that the uh, FCC may make a standard, but they could care less on whether or not it's it's um, it's being complied with. And it takes someone with an objective basis challenging it for anything to happen. What I've been asking any one of you to do in whatever wrong you want and need to make right. You see the example in that story, how you go about turning it around. If you don't do it that way, you are uh, screaming in the breeze, if you're screaming at all. Uh, yeah, okay, so. What? We go on and on and on about this stuff, uh, over and over. I don't know. What is it now? The, the cops are out on the highway. They will stop you. Uh, you don't have a word in your mouth. They vilify you. They trump up charges. You're going to go to jail. you got to do like last week. The guy has to do it just right. And good for him that he did. But we notice he we can learn from his experience. You have to change the dialogue. And that it's I've told you it's important that you do. You take some control without force over the dynamic when you're dealing with a cop. As I say and repeatedly add on to anything I say, you go out in, and enjoy your right of ingress and egress, and you could be facing death at the hands of a cop. I've got a little link for you to a YouTube. Cops are the sixth top cause for death of young United States men. In fact, they're listed right at the bottom of what I would consider to be health alerts, health crises in the United States of America. Again, to make the observation and we just wait for the news to come and give us the notice. It's the fact. I've told you to go in no different than all these other policies. To me, a policy is just an administrative condition. It's easier to deal in that than it is to try and deal it on the criminal side. Is one of the main reasons why you do it there. And you do it now. You don't wait to have to deal with the criminal system that's criminal. Just us, not just us. That you need the proof. Cops rank up there with the highest health crises of de causing death. First is car accidents, then suicide, homicide. Uh, suicide, Jeffrey Epstein, right? Okay, homicide, cops, <laughs> heart disease, cancer, and then the cops. So another thought comes to my mind, don't call the cops when you need help. You better deal with it on yourself. The odds of you being killed is as good as the biggest health crises that we have in, this, in the United States of America. So there's a notice to us. Did the study, you can pick that up. That can be used to go into any police uh, force, 
force local sheriff and say, we have some real important information. Uh, we have some real important work to do. And then you look to see what your, rem what your remedies are in case they don't want to work with you. And uh, some, some, act some constitutions actually say if an officer is derelict, then you can get him up for criminal charges. Don't expect much on that, but the point is you press that. You don't talk your opinion. You don't talk big and bad. You just give notice that the Constitution provides the accountability, and you will be insisting on it. And anybody that doesn't protect that, like a prosecutor, becomes aiding and abetting the crime. And so you start to learn to speak a little more refined, a little more uh, succinct, let law, no opinions, uh, right out of the black and white, and you bring up before... If you want to work, you can't stop cancer, you can't stop heart disease, you can't stop a suicide, you can't stop car accidents, but you can stop the police, or you can work to stop the police from killing you. I guess indirectly you have the right to healthy food, which they're trying to kill you with, healthy living that could limit and minimize all that, given your genetics, I suppose, your predisposition. But here's the point. The police are now on the top six causes of death of young people, young men in particular. What I've been talking to you about, what you're going to have to come and make laws and rules to stop. If you had been doing this while I've been asking, you would have been the weirdo avant-garde moving the proper point forward that is now becoming diminished. And, in a, in a, and here's another technique of the, of the method. Like I told you about the mass mailing earlier, that if you don't respond, the stalking horse of a mass mailing that no one responds to can be used by the other side to say, well, no one's interested. Our our proposition is correct because there's no opposition. Is a different technique where the government itself comes in to give the answer. And as I've told you, they're always going to fall short. Is now coming out. They're doing they, these people move by. I mean, it's predictable how these people move to protect themselves. New California law says police should kill only when necessary. The title is laughable. The point is, California did what I was telling you needs to be done. The problem is, California's doing it, not you. New California law says police should kill only when necessary. Boy, that's open-ended, isn't it? Necessity is the law, folks. There's no limit to that. So this is nothing. This is why you can't let someone else make this kind of legislation. And now this is going to be a state law. That's even worse. This is almost a license to kill. If they have the right statement, it'll be just a little bit more than I feared for my life. I feared for the officer's life. It'll just be a more refined statement that has to be uh, stated that they will put in every report if you don't have the video evidence to counter it all. It's a good step, but this is another part of the method, how you've been taken down. If they come in and they want to limit the liability to your enforcement... They will do this kind of thing. The California law says no police should uh, sh uh, no no police uh, should kill, uh, and only when necessary. It's so pathetic. But this is the point. This is the method. This is the occupier coming in, the military coming in, limiting and liability to its soldiers. It makes you believe they're doing something about a serious problem that kills. Now it's it equals it's equals just it's just equal to the worst crises, the health crises. A death, the causing death in this country, and they're only going to make a law that says it's necessary. And that necessary is going to be carved out, and I'm saying it should have been better than that. It should have been a whole lot more refined to what it ought to be. You are going to have to put that in. When you leave it to them, it won't. In uh, This is rolling out, folks. I told you this was going to happen, and here it is now. This another Phoenix police must now document each time they point their gun at someone. Oh, that's holding someone to account, isn't it? But see, this is what the system does. If they make the rule, they're going to say, now they've got the protection, and you're going to have a harder time to say, but it's not enough. But they're moving to do it. Like I told you for years that you need to do. If you don't, these shortened, these short sheeting measures will be the new rule. And there will be just, I'm just telling you, they're going to be justified underneath this in order to continue the slaughter that equates to being a, a, cri a health crisis equal to six harms that are essentially, I think, allowed upon us 
uh, generally when you look at the causes and the fact that all the money goes in and never solve a dang thing. So here, here it is, folks. I told you you're going to have to come up with the rules to to manip to to um, limit the ability of cops to kill you. And you didn't and haven't and didn't move fast enough. The states are starting to move. The jurisdictions are starting to move. And they're going to bring the minimalist of positions in order to protect them. And so they can continue to kill you. Yeah, I've said that enough. I, I hope this rests on you how this works. I don't know what more to say. It doesn't not even a surprise to me. I, in a way, I'm surprised to see it in the news. That the, here it is again. I can't believe how easy this is, how, how easy this game is being played against you, how well and easily they exploit us. You don't, you don't really appreciate maybe what the uh, protocols actually were telling us, for those of you that have read it even. Because if you read it, you probably would be as deeply affected as I was. I can't believe that you can't, and I can't, but I can't impose that upon you either. All I know is that because of how it affected me, I look at the world a whole lot different. It didn't make me bad. It didn't make me hate everybody. It didn't make an enemy of everybody. Well, I actually feel sorry for lots of stuff, but it's a sorry. It's a sad sorry. You know, it's not something that I feel sorry like I like I want to feel sorry. It's it's something that there's there's a bad in the world, and we're just not the people that we think we are to step up and stop it. And there's every opportunity to do that. And so looking at how people I'm told we are exploited and not even know the limit, just know that's the start of it. I can predict this stuff to you over years, and to watch this stuff come on us is just like, holy smokes, where is everybody? Pre-crime nation. Coming to a nation near you. College student arrested, stripped of firearms for posting social media meme. Okay, you keep telling, keep telling you it's pre-crime nation. You're going to allow it because you're not limiting this. You're not going out and advocating in the proper way how to not make it happen. 22-year-old Connecticut, Connecticut resident Brandon Wagshall was arrested on Friday for posting a meme on social media that authorities claim indicated, indicated, indicated he showed an interest in committing a mass shooting. Let me just stop all there. There's a lot to t say here, and I'd be a lot outside of my element in a way to talk about it, too. I don't know about Connecticut. I don't know anything. I know that there's this red flag thing. It's becoming uh, an issue. I've offered how you r respond to that. But when you look in the first paragraph, and I know this is media reporting this, but if authorities only claimed an indication and an interest, that does not rise to probable cause. When you read the story, not only was this kid picked up, 22-year-old kid, picked up. In other words, he's an adult, but he's been picked up as a kid. And he's been thrown in. You notice when you read the story, his father's guns were taken. Now, I read a whole bunch of violations going on. That if you assert rights against the failure of due process, you will start to be able to make a list from this story for those of you that are interested. You will be able to make a list of all the harms, the due process to every party that was affected, the failure of due process before it got here. In other words, there was no actual due process when it went to a hearing to get the red flag that you're supposed to be presumed innocent. That's a presumption that they're supposed to then be able to put refute the presumption, but that's supposed to be in a judicial sense. They can't relegate your rights to administrative judicial, which they do. And that's where you attack it, before, not after you're involved. And the ramifications are, a third party got harmed. Why? You can start now proving this is all wrong, if you want to challenge it. They've now put a term, this red flag, someone gets to indicate an interest in doing something, and that's now sufficient? Well, it is. And it is as long as these, we, start see, we keep hearing these, these stories, these reports. This was probably the, there's been a couple of these stories out that I looked at them and said, well, good, there's some elements here you can attack for the failures that they are. This one was even bigger because it actually incorporates a couple more aspects and somebody, a third party, happened to be the father's guns were taken. Where was the father in the hearing that presumed they had the right to take, remember that takings cause, that take the guns and the right, the appurtenant right, then the appurtenant rights. See, all this comes with the, 
The right of due process comes with all this. This is not spoken to in here. I'm asking you to look inside that, make your list, and find a way at it, or go find a way to help someone uh, that can advocate that there, or whatever. This is in a different state, even. In fact, the statement coming out of the kid here, the 22-year-old man, was that he had no intention. Perfect. No intention. You have to have knowledge and intention before crime can attach, let alone the takings of the right let alone to the private closed house hearing that goes on between who knows whom. These are all third parties to the right, the property and the right, that are determining your stuff as a felony and extortion, and the judge all allowed it here. That's another aspect of this that can be delineated. And nothing I've, and there's nothing here I'm, I'm telling you that's new, that I repeat ever. I think it's every week I come up with, I come up with anything that can be put back into this package and begin the process of stopping this nonsense that everyone will agree is unconstitutional and all that, whatever you call it, and continues anyway. Anyway, I mean, it, it starts with the First Amendment violation as well. I mean, we don't even get to the guns here uh, at, at some level. But anyway, you can look at the, you got to go look and base, you can, the first paragraph told me all I needed to know. I'll just take it accepted the way even the press stated. I'll say authorities claimed indicates and an interest. Okay, it's not anything. And then you see that this got, kid got involved. He now he sucked up. His father's guns were stolen, and the court now takes jurisdiction. And the judge allowed all that. Can't be that judge is in the law. The judge should have laughed at this, even pursuant to a red flag provision, because the judge is supposed to determine whether or not they can do it that way. Now, you will have to analyze how that was supposed to be done to analyze that the so-called judge didn't do the law. They try to bring it underneath this uh, public interest thing, the police power. Just dive into that, folks. You'll see that there's no element that they can attach to this, to that kid. <laughs> we look past all this stuff before, folks. You don't come in after they've dealt with them. You have to jump before this got started and delineate all the violations that happened consequent to the failure to provide adequate and meaningful due process. If you don't understand how the administrative function of this works, right in line. I've said that they, they win on both sides because we don't step in on either side. And when you're going to, another aspect, when you step in, we get another thing, and I don't, I want to bring this up as a memory uh, reminder, uh, to remind us that there's something else going on with all this, all this, uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein, all the notice of the nonsense we hear out there. Again, if you are someone that can take this information and do something with it, I want you there if you're interested. Otherwise, back off. Go find something you can get the information, the knowledge to put into action for. That's what you need. Uh, Seth Rich shows us now about the dynamic in the government and what you're up against with that. Uh, and Seth Rich needs to be reminded, remembered here uh, that there's glaring incongruities uh, in how this works, and we get uh, evidence of that right up front. Uh, Seth Rich murder update. FBI claims they didn't investigate, but the NSA claims can't disclose files due to matters of national security. I found fascinating. This is a big, rich wad of something to be d torn down. Uh, the FBI claims they didn't investigate a murder that appears to be national security related, and they did that through FOIAs, folks. This is how, again, one of your tools. What we're doing here is we're exposing the fallacy of the government protecting you or even national security. Why I focused on it. I've told you, you have to defeat the national security excuse. Here's how you start to do it. You take this and parse this story out. And you show that it's not in social security. That's an excuse. Again, I, I see all these words to read. You have to be invo involved in this to, to follow. 
There's people on Twitter that know about the backside of this thing. Yeah, the backside's behind the woodshed. That predicted all of this. That know about this. And the FBI has less information on it than those people can't be national security interests. The NSA is using it as a felony to block information. Which I would say you have probable cause to believe is the government committing felonies. Treason. Why? Because the Mueller thing is attached here, the Russian thing, the election thing, the whole nonsense, noise, psyop around Russia is tied into all this. And likely lots of people with Epstein, if those of you want to get interested there, but that's not the focus. The same thing they're, they're vilifying Julian Assange over who has a publisher who isn't now determined in law to be a publisher and had the right to do what he did, notwithstanding what you hear the federal government do. In the face of this national security challenge that they're putting against Assange, the FBI didn't think this was a national security issue. All I'm going through here is the very, very tippy, tippy, tippest things that you can start pulling out from these stories in just about any subject matter. I see this stories like others. All the incongruities that you can use to empower you if you truly want to get things done that you can grab up and start compiling for yourself. And this knowledge applied to other knowledge, determining your action makes you more powerful. Yes, I said more powerful. Don't know where the extent is and the limit. All I know is that I'm as, in certain things, I'm as powerful as I can be within the within the environment that I'm operating in that I'm not a victim of these criminals. Not like I was before I knew. And so if that's all we can do is this, this, this balancing part right now, then I'm asking you all to consider that's what you need to do. That may be as much as we get to do. But Seth Rich is a very interesting problem. And you see these anomalies come pouring out. This deals with the government dealing with political parties. This deals with the uh, Hillary Clinton and the servers. This deals with using uh, fake uh, news. This deals with the government coming down and coming after so-called conspiracy theorists. There's a bigger Gordian knot here to work about. And I don't mean to untie it. I mean, it wraps a bar of something. Maybe the bar itself, the bar association. It wraps something that I think if you found the core, you would be able to take all this Gordian knot nonsense and pull out that bar and identify who who is captured actually by all of this c confetti. And we now have two more that are playing both ends against the middle, the NSA and the FBI. That seems to me a perfect setup for any of you that have a good insight on a lot of this stuff. I'm sure there's a people more intelligent than me that can work out things that I only get a, a subtle glimpse or there to to open up. And why? It's because I don't get focused on that stuff myself. Again, I can only keep track of so much. I'm not a knowledge collector for the sake of knowledge collecting. I really am reduced to only being able to collect up what I can use. That's why I keep telling you, don't try to make it perfect what you think you do. Just jump in on something and do as best as you can. You'll be taught, you'll teach yourself and be taught pretty quickly. And then only to the limit. It's not so overwhelming. Uh, partly why I hesitate about the surf to, uh, silver and to surf, when I know what's in there that's being alluded to that isn't even being touched. And I know that there's a confusion around it. So I hesitate because it's easy to get overwhelmed and you walk away from it on a very serious subject matter. It's also easy to engage it and just want to agree because it is so complicated. You think that's good enough, and, and it's really not. It's okay, but it's, it's, it's a, there's certain things that really need to be understood more. So, uh, in this uh, national security <laughs> environment we live in, let's use it as the whitewash for everything in the, in the world. Uh, this little story came by that caught my interest a bit. But really, along the same lines, I keep telling you about the military consequence. It's coming, it's home, it's coming to roost. Not that we even haven't heard about some of this stuff before, but this is not to be taken lightly in a way. And it caused me a maybe inconsequential second question, is whether or not the 
this story is actually telegraphing another thing relative to some activity that's not being talked about that maybe people local to North Carolina know. United States Special Forces training exercises across North Carolina. Across North Carolina. Serious statement. Across North Carolina. Posse comitatus came up. All kinds of stuff come up. But I wondered why. My question was, why North Carolina? Why is this uh, overt special forces training being done in North Carolina? The question, is there a lot of active militia in uh, North Carolina? Maybe a message is being sent. Or maybe this is where the tra- literal training is happening as this is going this military consequence under the cover and color and fraud and treason of the use of national na- national security starts to be the plausible excuse for more, more i guess more physically controlling people now, I don't know, you know, I mean, it's just going to take a long, long, long time. I, I, although, I mean, in the last 20 years, it's been pretty astonishing. At light speed, almost, it seems. Predictable as it is, but light speed, nonetheless. And probably because they realize people are coming onto it, but you're coming onto it without doing any action. Not even in the least. And I'm trying to do, I'm not even hitting the important things. I'm saying, find something you feel comfortable jumping in that, that you feel you can afford to t- jump into. Do it without jeopardy. Just to learn the basics is not saying you're going to be able to tackle these bigger issues. Things are coming down. Things are given notice to us. This is a waiting game as well. If you want to see a waiting game, watch an interesting waiting game. Look at Syria. That's, boy, the carnival carnival mirror uh, reflection. What Russia and Syria are doing relative to Turkey has been very interesting. See, Turkey is is the trespasser. It didn't have ever have a place there. And now Turkey's finding itself to be the the blackhead that's in the country that's being kind of ousted slowly by people who are patient and waiting and waiting and still doing their thing, but watching and waiting and making a condition that the blackhead will eventually have to be removed or cause an infl- inflammation. And so there's always interesting techniques to be looked at outside that we can use as as leads on how we might work. It's not going to work in this case like military. It's not going to work at the level of government instrumentalities. It works that those things reflect in us like a fractal, that we have the same capacities, but in a more confined place. And I don't mean that in a confining constriction. I mean that's in us. And we can only work through the networks or the area that we have have access to. So, another reflection that they're not bashful to move the military at a special forces exercise into an entire state, folks, if we didn't have all those other city-by-city city infiltrations. Now, now this is a whole state, if you hope, hope you see that. And I'm getting a note here that Rod Class lives in North Carolina. Okay, he's, he's another guy. Uh, Rod Class is a special uh, case, I guess. I mean, he's, he has a thing he knows. But I would la- ask you to look at all the actual success he has and uh, really look at the stuff that he digs up, not as as the stuff he researches, but more in the application. He, I feel he has a, a big blind spot to administrative processes or judicial processes, but that's up to everyone to decide. I do not study uh, his stuff. And he, uh, I looked at it, and he, uh, I waved off of it pretty quickly. He's in North Carolina. Well, that might be, you know, another coincidence that has a meaning. My observation was, why would they do it in that state? Could have been any state. They've done other things in other states. Why would they drop in on the whole state in North Carolina if it's not to send a message? And I'm saying to those people there, be careful. Look what's going on. Maybe don't stand up so bright because you're so tough about this. Start understanding what's going on. There's a bigger dynamic running, and it's going to go state, uh, countrywide. You're going to have to be a lot more tactical about how we you know, how we address what we're up against. It may not, as I said, you make a, we have to make unorthodox type actions, and that doesn't mean more bodacious actions. That means you literally are looking to be more invisible to what's going on, so that you get to go do things and continue to do things. The people that we're up against are doing things transparent to us. 
You have to get the eyes to see transparent things. You won't do it by presuming you think you know about all that you think you know. In fact, there was another thing came on about, I don't know, I guess I'll get off the point, but I won't say it. It's, we tend to think that we're making action, and these are set, these things that are decided that look to be correct could be set up for the takedown. And that's, that's what I, I'm concerned in the second step. It can be defeated if you're aware of the setup. It's like knowing the magic trick. Then you're just waiting for the trigger. But anyway, so do I have enough time on this? Uh, real quickly, the war, another type of war uh, against us that's being ameliorated a bit, but not so much either, because I don't think that there's an actual understanding in the administrations of things, at least the way I've studied and understand it. Trump administration overhauls Endangered Species Act as critics fear animal extinction. On the picture of this story in the USA Today was a rhinoceros, and I don't know where a rhinoceros lives in the wild in the United States of America to show you the deception that was going on. But let me offer something about this war that's also against us, the producers in the United States of America relative to this, and a question that was posed to me relative to the utility of this. The NEPA Act and the, Spe uh, the Species Act should not be an interruption. But because of the judiciary and the imposition of the agencies and the pressure by the environmental terrorists, that uh, has caused some trouble. NEPA wouldn't really allow it. The ESA will not allow that you use an endangered species to stop production. But there's a fraudulent methods that judges use and uh, in not declaring the proper application. The rhino is not an endangered species, and I meant that as a pun in my my Twitter. Uh, R-H-I-N-O is, uh, what, the uh, Republican in name only? And so these are the, the insiders that are defeating us. But the Trump administration is relieving some of these problems, but they aren't the full answer again. They're the answer that the system can get through with. I actually don't think that, that the Trump administration understands and I've gotten more word that the, the, the county commissioner we work with that was po chosen was chosen because the administration contacted someone in the West Coast and said, who's the best uh, forest management program understander? And uh, our, the commissioner we worked it with, uh, came, name came up because they don't know, know anything back there that way. So anyway, if you have any value what I'm saying, uh, what we do and how, what you start to understand, it's beyond opinion. You, I can go right to the black and white on how all this stuff works. I can go to the experience that I've garnered and, and, in fact, looking at people who wrote things, watching their experience, but analyzing that wasn't the answer. That was just another experience to, to work through. Guided me to be here to guide you. Again, I can only lead you to the path. You're going to have to take your own path. Every one of us will. I can't change that. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and uh, Jules at ucy.tv and Sound Minds and everyone else who may simulcast this. Thank you very much on the rebroadcast publications everywhere you do and the promotion of the of the broadcast. I appreciate all, all you folks that are doing this on the Twitter and all and in mind. So thank you very much. I appreciate getting the word out on how do we make this thing work. How do we make this place better? And I uh, hope something I said today inspires you to get more involved. Uh, the knowledge is not enough, folks. It, it's action. I keep telling you that. And somebody long time ago said the same thing. So I'm feeling like I'm in good company with that. I'll be with you next week, Tech Diffs or Nature Will. that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass. <laughs>